We are live here at Salter Oval in Bundaberg on SRL TV for this first for the first game of round five between the Broncos and the Eels. My name is Jack Carl and I'm joined in the commentary box by Will K. How are you, Kay? Going great today. Thank you very much, Carl. We're looking at a superb game between the top of oh sorry, sorry, that's the bottom of the table and the Brisbane Broncos and the Paramount Eels both going into this game with an 0-4 record. It's definitely the battle for the wooden spoon here. Yeah, well, you mentioned that they're both on 0-4 records. Well, they've both scored 46 points, exactly, and they've both conceded, conceded 90 points, exactly. They have a negative 50 differential. This really is the battle for the spoon. It's looking drastic as some teams, such as the Parramatta Eels, going so low as to lose against the Penrith Panthers. Uh, it's, it's just a bit of a shocker, really. Um, and they've had a shocking start to the season, but hopefully they can turn it around um, and not get the spoon at the very least here. Yeah, well, you mentioned going as low as to losing to the Panthers. I mean, that's a pretty low low. Uh, uh, but uh, the Broncos in round um, seven, I believe, will also have to face the Panthers. Um, I don't think they win that. They've got to verse the Rabbitohs next round, the Broncos. And then the Eels have the Sea Eagles and Cowboys, two of the toughest opponents there are. I don't see either one winning a game after this. Yeah, they'll be hard-pressed, like you say, especially the Eels, to win a game considering that they've got the Manly Seagulls still on their high horse off their record uh, win streak. And the Cowboys, who have been in red-hot in last season, but still pretty red-hot. And then, likewise, the Broncos will be hard-pressed to win a game, although I think, like we said, the, the Penrith Panthers, there is a chance that they will be beaten. Yeah, well, that, that really is the game for the Broncos if they don't win it here. That'll be their second chance. The Eels have to win tonight as Luke Short bursts straight through the middle. Great run there from the skipper. But uh, the Eels, they have to win tonight. They're not going to win another game. Absolutely not. The Broncos, they might have a second chance to get a win on the board in round seven. Uh, who do you think will win this one? Uh, for this one, I've got the Brisbane Broncos as my tip, although they haven't been in two red hot form definitely in the preseason we saw some great stuff from them and the pickup from creed alex chapman for me alexander chapman sorry uh is really a game changer for them yeah i'll have to agree with you as the eels have their first chance it dribbles through it hits not sure who that is on the leg there and seamus wilson gets tackled there great set there from the eels yeah, it was that man jason farrah that the he's just put his leg in the way of that ball there and it's rebounded and that allowed them to stop that rushing Parramatta kick chase and stop a good certain try. Yeah, well, they absolutely needed that one. Eels off to a quick start there. Broncos now trapped in their own 20. It's third tackle already. They're only 15 metres out. I'm going to need something special in this set. As Vretto, he makes a little line break. That's good there from Pete Vretto. He gets tackled just before the 40 metre line. There's been some, uh, some whispers about Pete. He's unhappy at all. Oh, Herbin. That is not what they needed from Herbin. And the Eels have a prime opportunity to attack the Broncos' line. Yeah, that was not great stuff from Sam Herbin tonight playing in the 5-8. It's not going to lose a whole lot of ground, but just kicking it out on the full on the last... I was not on the last, sorry. And putting a changeover exactly where the kick was taken. It's just... Not a great start for the 5-8 there out of his element tonight. Yeah, well, we mentioned you mentioned out of his element. I'm not sure playing Herbin at six is the right idea. As they give away a held and tackle penalty, they will take the two, which might not be a bad idea, but they had him on the back foot there. Yeah, I'm not too sure about this decision to take the two here. It looked like it came from the bench, the uh, staff saying... To take the two, Charlie Butler more than happy to show off his kicking abilities. Uh, not necessarily the best choice when you've got the Broncos under the pump as much as you they had them. All right, so we had a bit of technical difficulties there, but I think I was saying before uh, the cut that um yeah, about the Broncos' defense and um, the fact that they probably couldn't have held them out there, the Eels. The Eels could have got some really good momentum on the board early, but... Um, just ticking the scoreboard over, getting the two points early. Might come back to bite them if they uh, if they don't get too many more opportunities, though. And did it, May. And we've had a bit of a mix-up this week with some of the team lists. 
The likes for the Eels, I guess the biggest one is that Cherry Evans has moved into the six with Blake Harris, the 5'8", actually moving into the fullback role tonight. An un, uh, unfamiliar territory for him, but I'm sure that uh, he's been one of the best players for the Eels this season, so I'm sure that he'll excel there. Yeah, well, you mentioned him being one of the best players. I think he's really been the shining light. I think that when the uh, the re-signing window opens, I think Eels should absolutely pounce on him. Uh, he looks like a player for the future uh, so far. It'll be interesting to see how he goes at fullback tonight. It's been a bit disappointing to see what, what he's, what the kind of, uh, I guess, uh, words that he's had said about him in the press have been, especially from fans. It's been a bit disappointing with him actually really holding up a drastically failing Eels side. As Diab, we got <laughs> Diab. Oh, sorry to cut you off there, Kay, but Coda Diab from absolutely nothing. Playing at prop tonight, he bursts through the middle. He scores the Broncos' first try, and just like that, it was all the Eels, and the Broncos get one opportunity, and they pounce. Yeah, it was an amazing run from Chapman, and it was that man, Matthew Vaughan, that I was just speaking about. He just peeled off. Uh, it was the, the ex-Manly player that was recently traded for Joey Kelly. Creed Alex Chapman actually setting up that try drawing out players uh, on their right and then switching the ball inside for Cota Diab to run a great line and just keep on running to go to the try line. Yeah, well, that two points may have just invited that try. I mean, it, it could be a completely different story here. We could be 6-0 Parramatta now putting the pressure on them. And um, instead, they don't do well in that set. And then um, Quandell Dingle takes a pretty good run uh, on the kick return. And um, Alex Chapman does the rest with the ebb. That was very impressive from the young forward, looking very, very confident and with a great big smile as soon as he bought, um, as soon as he beat Matthew Vaughan, he was ecstatic to score. And he takes the first run off the kickoff as well. I dare say the blood's pumping a little bit. I'm not sure where he's been playing, but I know he's played hooker for the Broncos in the past. Um, what do you think of him at prop? Well, oh, he's that's... a big, but oh, that's a critical error there. Oh. Uh, well, I was going to say, Kota Diab, he's quite a big body. And um, as we saw just moments ago, he's got a bit of pace to him. So I think the prop position is really quite actually uh, a great fit for him. Yeah, I'd have to agree. The Eels, that looks forward. Oh, no. Well, there might be some blow-up about that as Luke Short goes over and heads back immediately. Oh, that looked a mile forward. Wow. Uh, the touch judges, I know you don't like them, Carl, and I guess that's another reason not to. It was a pretty... It looked very forward. I guess the referees have declared it that it floated instead of fought off the hands, but Luke Short's the man that comes up with the points there for his, uh, <laughs> I think that's his, what, seventh try of his career, first for the season. Yeah, well, um, the Broncos might have a little bit to say to the commission about that, but uh, they shouldn't have been in that position to begin with. They made a pretty poor error off the kickoff, and um, I guess Parramatta were just good enough to make them pay. And it was Luke Short criticizing the referees last week. Not very happy with their treatment of their man um, who's playing on the bench today after a concussion. Jordan Marshall not being allowed to exit the field after contracting that concussion. And now he's uh, got a call go his way. Maybe that's a bit of goodwill there. Yeah, well, uh, you speak of that incident. And there was actually a referee, I think it was Noah Gould, who was sacked during the week. And... Um, Another error here. I think that's the Eels. It's not. It's the Broncos. They'll get six more. Um, but yeah, Noah Gould was sacked during the week. And uh, Ashley Klein making his debut referee appearance in, in the SRL tonight. Yeah, I've been watching this man quite closely, Ashley Klein. Uh, yeah, that's all I've got to say for that one. Yeah, well, uh, it won't be great to... Uh, I guess it was the touchy's fault, but uh, it won't good, look good next to his name, that uh, forward pass incident. As the Eels spread the ball out to Settendag. That play looks a little bit dangerous. 
But uh, Jack Spillane, playing in the centers, able to wrap him up nicely. We go to the right to Krimp, the former Broncos Colt hero. He's been pretty good for the Eels this season. He goes out to Russell. He puts the bomb up. It'll land down about five meters out. And Luca Moscow takes it easily and gets a few meters for his troubles. What have you thought about this game so far? Uh, yeah, well, it, it's like watching a bit of an under-12s game, honestly, with how many errors there have been. Um, hopefully, I know it's not the best of the best SRL teams, but I'm hoping that we see some better footy come very, very shortly. And we just saw Luca Moscow looking very dangerous, turning oh, Matthew Vaughan almost inside out. That's the kind of stuff that I want to see from this game. I know that both of these teams have it in them to produce some great quality football. They just need to make sure that their sides click. Yeah, well, uh, the Eels, they're going to be starting very close to the halfway line here. And uh, the Broncos might be in a little bit of trouble in this set if their previous defensive efforts are anything to uh, go off. As Evans will send it out to Mendonca. Mendonca through space. He turns the fullback inside out. Oh, pulled down just by Moscow. The Eels now. They send it out to Evans. There's a few former Broncos in this side. Atchison out to Russell. He's going to try to push his way over. The Broncos will put him on their back. They're defending well here, the Bronx. This will be the last play. The kick is dangerous. It'll, who will it be? It'll be Butler. He puts it in for Short, and Short will get a double to Skipper. Well, there you go, the skipper, Luke Short, going in for a double tonight, two for the season now. It was an interesting kick there. None of the Broncos seemed to want to take it. Charlie Butler just only ever slow, ever so slightly touching it off his boot, and it just dribbled very, very slowly, and Luke Short leant down, picked it up, and no one was there in front of him. Yeah, well, I'm not sure what the Broncos were doing there. Levi Raymond and Coda Diab were around the ball. They just kind of looked at it, and then... Uh didn't pick it up, and um, they got punished for that. And Luke Short, absolute captain's knock so far. I believe he's going off uh, relatively soon. He usually does each week. Um, but he'll be pretty happy with this stint. It's been a very bountiful first 15 minutes for the skipper. Already scoring two tries, and now Charlie Butler extends that lead by two to make it eight above the Brisbane Broncos. Justin plays the man looking... Very disappointed in his team's defense so far. Heads down, not looking too happy. He was ripping into them just moments ago at the team huddle after the try. And he'll kick us off here. Well, I'll tell you what. If you take out that Diab try that was off the penalty goal, it definitely looks like they should have gone for the try there. Because right now they are completely on top. The, uh, the um, Parramatta Eels. The Broncos just look completely lost. And um, this could get ugly if the Broncos don't snap out of it they're making a few errors inviting the eels into this game they just need to to calm down and try to mount an offensive himself indeed they do is matt downey with a very strong line oh well that's I... disappointing it was pete freddo there the man with a good intercept the, just not watching over his shoulder there i believe it was matt downey and he's just thrown it straight to an opposing jersey as oh, that no. pass is so forward. What happened there? The touchies didn't miss that one. <laughs> I, that was an absolutely shocking pass. As we have Blake Harris now, that was that was awful pass there, and that's the kind of footy that I'm talking about. All of a sudden, the Brisbane Broncos think they're an under-12s NFL team. <laughs> the Eels are on a strong campaign here towards the line. Well, yeah, Seamus Wilson now taking the ball up on the on the third tackle. He also have a few plays here. Oh. Goes to Downey. And again, under 12 gridiron players. They throw it forward. That's the third forward pass now. Disappointing. Well, the, the referees need to get outside of the middle of the field, get on the sideline and get some bloody flags because if that is not NFL playing, I don't know what is. Yeah, well, it's the same with fumbles, to be honest. They've dropped the ball a lot, too. As Farrah offloads it, and another error. The Broncos, they're their own worst enemy right now, shooting themselves in the foot. It's like they're masochists. I didn't even know what to say at this point. 
both teams need to sharpen up their game if they want to even, I don't know, score points, go to half time at this point. At this point, I don't know what they're trying to achieve. I think this just shows why these two teams are are last or se- uh, last and second last. I guess they're not playing well. As the Eels, Wilson, he might push his way over here. Farrow on top of him. And he's oh, oh unable God. to stop him, I think. I think he got that ball to the line. Yeah, it's looked like Seamus Wilson has gotten it down here. And it's looking good off the first angle for the video referee. I think that's gotten him down there. We'll wait to see if we get the green light or not. Yeah, and we sure light. do. Well, Parramatta now will take this lead out to, you'd probably say, 14. Butler doesn't miss these often, although commentator curse does exist. Um, but, yeah, the Parramatta Eels, they just look completely on top. And I think it's the fact that the Broncos, I don't, when was the last time they had a completed set? I don't know, but I'd like to quickly mention Seamus Wilson, his first round in the SRL. A big congratulations to you, young man, on your debut scoring a try. You know, it may not be the greatest of games, but uh, uh, certainly a big congratulations to you on making your way here. Well, yeah, I didn't even realize that. Uh, I didn't realize Seamus Wilson was debuting today. That's a great achievement to score on debut there. And uh, it puts Parramatta very far in front. I will just mention, I did just commentate a curse Butler as he misses the conversion. Yeah, well, I guess we did. did. Ford Park and more knock-ons if the commentator curses a thing. That's exactly what we want in this game yeah, uh, to see really more of. <laughs> As we have Harris. Oh, he's, Pete oh, Ferreira has no, taken no. his head off here. Wow. Ferreira just absolutely clobbered the young gun. He might be getting a bit frustrated there. I think Plays needs to go over and tell him to calm down a bit. Ferreira just absolutely taking his head off. And the Eels, again, more field position. It was Charlie Butler, the man, to go and push Fredo over straight away in the referee's face, screaming at him like he's just committed manslaughter on the pitch just about as we have uh, that man Charlie Butler sticking up for his teammates, now taking a run. Yeah, well, the Eels, they're in the red zone now, yet again. That's where most of this game has been played. They send it off to the young gun, Seamus Wilson. He's had a few good touches in this game. The try before. Evans sent it up to Butler. Blake Harris. Oh! Ahead, but it doesn't hinder his ability to score a try. He absolutely fools the Broncos' defense. And great job there from Blake Harris. That is his second try of the season and career. Blake Harris stepping into the fullback jersey tonight out of his usual position in the halves. A great effort from you, young man. You've done very, very well to get there in the in goal. And he's been looking pretty dangerous tonight in his kick returns and his runs as we have a look at the Charlie Butler will get this kick. Yeah, well, um, I've got to say, hey, on Blake Harris, he's looked very good all season at 5'8". Like I said, he was he's probably the shining light of the team. Has he found a new home at fullback? He's looked pretty dangerous in this game. Yeah, he's looking pretty good in defense. He's been a bit lackluster, obviously, off that first try for the Broncos, first and only try, rather, of Cota Diab just kind of getting around him for not much reason. Maybe he needs to work on his agility, try and get that Illinois shuttle run capacity up and that time better. Um, but he's definitely been looking probably the most dangerous player on the field tonight for them. Yeah, I'd have to agree, I think. I think Harris really is going to be um, a big player in the SRL in the future seasons to come. And um, he might be getting a few contract offers. Yeah, Blake Harris is the kind of player that you want at a good developmental club. And uh, my pick would be if, if he's got an offer, I'd go straight to the Newcastle Knights for next season. Oh. Uh, guaranteed, a, almost guaranteed rather, a starting spot and with some great minds such as... Uh, the man himself, Logan Strange, in the captaincy with Mark Lee joining him. I mean, it'd be a great place to go and develop as a player. Well, you mentioned developmental club. There's no better than Manly. Kay, are you out the out of, are you out the door? Like Harris going to replace you? Uh, that's the exact reason that I didn't say Manly. I didn't want 
uh, my, my captain, Matty Harris, to get any ideas. You know, my form has been a bit shocking the last couple of weeks. So I didn't want to, as the, <laughs> as the recruitment leader uh, and scout, player scout for the Manly Seagulls, I didn't want to give the captain any ideas at all. Sorry, Casey K, not Matty Harris. Both of them would be on, my, on me about that. I think you. I think you're going to be gone. I think you're going to be gone if they get any sniff of Blake Harris. Uh, Broncos. This is the best field position they've had for a long time, and it's it's not great field position, and that's a decent kick down to Demando. <laughs> and that is saying something. It's the greatest field position of the terrible field position that they have. They've not been marching anywhere near as the meters as the eels have who have just been dominant through their forward pack making really really easy meters of solid runs off the likes of luke short and also like i said blake harris been very dangerous in attack yeah well it's just been a complete domination the only chance the broncos have really had was that try they scored and um eels have just completely been on top of them as butler goes for the early Ooh. kick that might invite them back into the game as plays will take the first tackle just before the 30 meter line. The Broncos yeah. probably need to score soon. The kick looking very wobbly there. Came off the side of Charlie Butler's boot. It was kind of an awkward take for Justin Plays, but he took it well. It was just a bit weird. Kick didn't go very far and didn't get much height. It just must have just come off the side of his toe. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking that it's come off the side of the boot there. As oh! Raymond absolutely shattered. Great shot there as Lillard will take it up past the 10-meter line. The Broncos with a chance to score as we enter the final nine minutes of the first half. Herbin puts a bomb up. It looks pretty good. It's not deep enough to be a courting goal. And Justin plays as we tackle with the ball there. That was a good little attacking kick there from Sam Herbin. Yeah, there's Jack Spillane tapping it back. Oh! Oh, for Justin plays as a shot's been put on here. Well, I don't know if he had the ball then. Is that legal? <laughs> like we said, actually, Klein refereeing, oh, so anything Vretto goes. How did Vretto get there? That was absolutely nothing. Where was the defense there from the Eels? Pete Vretto just takes a little hit up. We saw it with Seamus Wilson earlier, and uh, Pete Vretto does the same. Oh, it's looking somewhat play. short of the line there. I'm not too sure if it's gotten there. We'll get... The referee will have his say as it's, it's indeed a try. Ashley Klein doing his signature move, the old stop the game and show us the TV. And uh, Pete Ferrado's crossed and put some points on the board for his team. Yeah, well, on that short thing, I think he got just a blade of grass on there. Literally just a blade of grass, and uh, that's all you need to get a try. And Ferrado, the former skipper, former co-skipper, gets his team back into the game. As Justin plays, kicks it now out of his usual position tonight, playing fullback. Not necessarily the move that I would have made. What are your thoughts on that, Carl? Yeah, look, I think when you look at the Broncos team, you look at their best players, you think the first player you think of is Sam Herbin. And we haven't seen much of Herbin tonight. The only time I can actually remember seeing Herbin is when he kicked it out in the full, which isn't something that you want to be remembered for. I think... Um, Look, I think Plays is an all right fullback. I don't think that's that's a problem I have with it. I think that Herbin is not a good 5'8 and that he should be playing fullback. He's too good to not play fullback. Yeah, Samuel Herbin, he's been a great player for any club that he's been at. Obviously, the Broncos the last couple of seasons, winning a premiership ra um, season two for the, um, for the Manly Seagulls. Uh, it, it's just been a bit of a weird move to put him into the six when he's such an established fullback. Yeah, I just I just I don't know about it. It's um, a bit weird. I don't know what other options they have for five eight. Um, but I don't think even this man Levi Raymond and then Bo Sadler's on the bench at the moment. I'd even have Levi Raymond six and bring Bo Sadler on into the number nine, and then obviously plays back into the centers. Um, I just don't think it's a great idea to play him there. Um, I think he's too good for it. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. Like, he just doesn't have the kind of, I don't know, archetype that you'd want from a 5'8", necessarily. Like, he's got really, really good um, stats with the 97 speed and great agility. But I guess the main thing... 
for halves is that they need their discipline to hold on to that ball. And with only a 44 rated discipline, it's just going to be a bit tough for him. Yeah, I've got to agree. Broncos with um, another good opportunity there in field position, but Vredo just absolutely oh. smashed. We've seen a few big impact tackles there from uh, both sides tonight. And uh, Harris finds oh. his space. Jeez. He's looking good. He's looking really good at fullback. I think he's found a new home there. He's got some really good speed there. His step looks good. Um, if I was Parramatta, I'd stick with him there at uh, fullback. He's looked very dangerous tonight. I don't know if you can go um, over the man, Cherry Evans, who's a good footballer and a great fullback as well. It, it's a tough decision that they've got coming up for the next couple of weeks. And you've also got the likes of Dawson Swarm, who's also a fullback. I mean, they've got options here, but I just I don't see them going past uh, the man, Blake Harris. Yeah, and while I think we looked at Herbin and plays before, I think the difference with the Eels is that Cherry Evans is a good 5'8 as well. Um, I just don't know if Herbin's that. So I, I think the, that it'll work for the Eels to have Cherry Evans at 6 and Harris at 1. I don't think it'll work for Broncos to have plays at 1 and Herbin at 6. Mm. I'd agree with that, and I think my message to Blake Harris would be to work on his speed and agility if he is to move into the fullback position. The Eels, with an incredibly slow team, their their fastest player being Xavier Demeta with an 88 rated, um, <laughs> rated speed, it's a lot slower than the likes of the Broncos where we see players such as Luka Moscow with a 99, Mark Iron with a 90, and then some of their forwards even, Creed Alex Chapman with an 85, and likewise for Simon Hunt. It's, it's just really mismatch and speed, and that's really what's been killing the Eels this season. Yeah, well, I think, I think the problem with the Eels is a lot of their team is rookies, and none of those rookies have speed demon archetypes. So they've got to actually upgrade their speed, and I'm not, I can't be certain if they're doing that. Um, I'm not sure, to be honest, but um, they just, they're just they a very slow team. As this will be the last play of the half. Mark Iron just takes it up, settles there. We'll see you in the second half on SRL TV. Welcome back to the second half here on SRL TV. The Broncos trail 12 points to 24 against the Parramatta Eels. Kay, what were your thoughts on the first half? Uh, well, it was pretty shocking, to be honest. Some of it, um, as a period there when uh, neither team could hold onto the ball nor throw it backwards. So I'm hoping for a better second half here, uh, getting some more completions, getting some better sets, better meterage, and just overall a better game. Yeah, well, we mentioned it a few times. It was like watching a, a game of gridiron, a game of NFL. Um, a lot of forward passes. And, <laughs> and um, both teams made some changes at halftime. The Eels, uh, they've made um, they've made four changes. Barisic has come on for Matt Downey. Uh, Anthony McDonald has come on for Luke Short, which I find interesting. Swarm, Dawson Swarm, has come on for Shannon Freeburn. And um, Jordan Marshall has come on for... Sammy Archison, what are your thoughts on Parramatta's changes? Well, oh, some of these changes, you know, it, I don't know if these can save you. Like, just some of the players going on and off here from both teams, I don't know if it, the result will be changed at the end of the day. Yeah, well, it's certainly interesting. Um, for the Broncos, uh, uh, Simon Hunt has come on for Jack Spillane in the centres. I think Simon Hunt's too good to play centre. Um, as Thomas Mandonka with an intercept. Oh. Looks like he might run the whole way. Who's that that's pulled him down? I believe it's that man, Bo Sadler, that's pulled him down. Yeah, it would be Bo Sadler, number 17. Another oh. hit, another drop ball. And Verretto takes it now. Oh, my goodness. 
yeah, speechless. That is exactly the kind of stuff that I was talking about. Just having no regard for ball security from both sides there. And then it's turned off to two really quick uh, changeovers. Yeah, well, um, both sides just losing the ball there and big meters made both sides. Parramatta could have put another try on there, but they were too impatient. And now Broncos have another opportunity as Vretto oh milks the offside penalty. God. And the Broncos, they have a chance to score. No, 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 no. What were they thinking there? The Eels, they need to get out of the ruck if they're offside. Actually, Klein, the referee, he is known for those kind of penalties. And he is known for being a stickler and really, really black and white about offside penalties. So under no circumstance should the Eels be standing in the ruck like that. Yeah, just a, just a basic error there. And giving the Broncos just opportunities. They, they're in front here, the Eels. They just need to tighten up. As Herbin pushed his way over the line, he looks good. I think he got to the ground there. Samuel Herbin may have just put this game within six points. This has been a shocking first half from the Eel, uh, start to the second half from the Eels. Well, it's that man, Jordan Marshall, that last week got concussed. Maybe he's still a little bit concussed, considering that a, four, a, a back, a fullback of all people, has just pushed him over the line and driven him back five meters to put the ball down. Looking very, very weak, the Parramatta defense there. Yeah, I'm just not sure what to, what to think of this game. It's just very um, sloppy, I guess. Um, neither team, if they just pulled their head in, both teams could run away with this. They're just, they're just killing each other. Like they're, or killing themselves, sorry. They're, they're really hurting themselves. It's, neither team has been beaten tonight. It's, it is them that have been beaten by themselves. If that makes sense. It does indeed. It's a bit painful to watch, honestly. It's like, I don't know, watching a sad puppy video. <laughs> that's that's what I describe it as. It's been pretty brutal for both sides here. Just kind of just doing nothing on the field. And we can see why this is the battle for the wooden spoon. Maybe if they get a draw, they can actually um, share it. And I think at I the think moment, that's a very soon, likely yeah. outcome. Yeah, I think it would um, suit both team season if they shared the wooden spoon, to be honest. That would, uh, again, they'd be on the exact same differential, exact same points scored and conceded. It would be perfect. It would be very poetic and uh, very fitting for uh, these two sides. Well, with some of the teams that these teams are coming up against, I'm sure that the likes of the Cowboys and the Manly Seagulls can coordinate their points so that they would be able to share it. They could have a little bit of a gentleman's agreement just to embarrass both of these teams because really, I think they both really, really deserve this great prize of the wooden spoon. Yeah, just toying with them. Toying with both these two sides. I mean, even uh, we looked at it back in round three, it was Penrith v. Parramatta, and we labelled that one. Oh, good kick. Oh. Oh, that pushes way over. Oh. Nah. Nah. Okay, well... As I was saying, we labelled that game in round three as the wooden spoon game. Penrith have looked better than both of these sides, and that's saying something. Um, I mean, I just I don't see how either of these teams improve in this season, and this game has really shown that. Well, to be honest, my uh, advice for both the teams would to be call a priest and uh, maybe try and perform an exorcism on whatever evil spirits are holding them in the bottom eight, in the bottom two of the eight, because obviously there's some supernatural forces at play here. I think the supernatural forces are just, <laughs> they like to throw the ball forward and they like to drop the ball. I think that's, maybe they just need to get a, uh, a rugby league coach in there. <laughs> Rather than an NFL, NFL one, you reckon? Yeah. And As oh, well, Seamus Wilson! Seamus Wilson gets a double on debut. What a story for the young gun, Seamus Wilson. He scored one in the first half, just pushing his way over. This time it's a little grubber kick from, uh, was it Charlie Butler? No, it was Cherry Evans. And beautiful little kick there. And Seamus Wilson, what an amazing game to start on in his SRL career. Yeah, he's had a good start indeed, scoring a double. You see him there just running his line, doing exactly what the captain, Luke Shaw, wants of him. And he's come up with the rewards there. Great effort from the young gun. And I think we'll be seeing a lot more of him in the SRL. 
Yeah, I've got to agree. Um, he's one of the first SRL Minds players to be picked up this season. Um, obviously, other than Blair Curtin, I believe. I think there's one other one, but I don't know who they are. You would know better. Uh... I'd have to check the books, mate, but um, there's a fair few of them. I think uh, the likes of Bailey Wilson has been one of them um, for the Broncos. Uh, I'm trying to think now. There's that many players coming through the mines and not lasting long enough and staying that it, you never really know um, as we get kicked off here again. Yeah, well, Wilson, he's all good. So... Uh that's really realistically the point I was trying to make there, and um, I think he'll I think he'll be around for a long time. He'll be a hot topic. Um, he'll be a hot signing come the off season, or well, not even come a few weeks. Yeah, realistically, we it's not that long to go um, before the end of the season. Being in round five of seven, it's very very close uh, to the end and to that re-signing period as uh, players will be scrambling to try and secure some contracts. You know, myself having gone through some of those dramas, uh, there have been put in protections for players. Um, and definitely the salary cap this season will be another challenge that captains will have to navigate as it changes, uh, looking to make different inclusions and exclusions for the top players. So mainly Seagulls in particular, the team that I'm at currently... Uh, will be, I guess, struggling to hold some of their players, and likewise, so, so will another a lot of other clubs. Yeah, that's gonna be it's gonna be interesting when uh, when that signing window opens up, um, especially with the knights in the frame. The marketplace is gonna be a, a little bit crazy. There's Parramatta on the last play. They send it to Cherry Evans. It's a decent kick. Could come down to the crossbar here, but plays. He handles that nicely. Just takes the catch, and the Broncos will get a 20 meter tap. Yeah, I thought players was just going to run it then and just keep on going. The referee said, no, you got to tap it, mate. You've been taking it on the full on the end goal. He looked like he was ready to go and run away. Uh, but I guess the Eels kind of got lucky there that the referee stuck to the rule um, and didn't allow him to. Yeah, well, he looked like he was gone. We know how much speed plays has. Um, it was a great take there from him. And um, Broncos now, third tackle up to the 40-meter line. Look, this game has kind of gone into a bit of a, a holding pattern now where neither team has really done much since that Wilson try. Which team do you think will uh, will pounce on it first? As Mark Iron might actually do just that as he kicks a 40-20. Beautiful oh. job from Mark Iron. That's Why about the... Broncos? Oh, sorry, Carl. That's about the best footy that you're going to get from these two teams. Showing off exactly why... They are in such poor rankings and power rankings in the SRL as Lillard now trying to push over. It was a great kick from Mark Iron to get the, his team a great field position and a great set just 10 metres out from the opposition try line. Broncos now deep on the attack. As Herbin sends it to plays. He gets rid of one, unable to push his way all the way to the line. He's putting his back there. Simon Hunt in dummy half will not do too much there. We get pushed back an extra few meters. Bo Sadler rushes over to the ball. Sends it to Diab. He scored a try earlier. He might push his way over. But no, he's held up and put in his back. Ashley Klein will send it upstairs, though. Pretty certain that didn't get down. Yeah, as is the norm for Ashley Klein. Not keen to make a decision. Um, he's sent it upstairs here. I don't think it'll be a try at all. And uh, my guess is that... Knowing the Broncos, they'll probably try and run the ball in this last tackle. He goes out to Herb and he doesn't run the ball. He puts the bomb up. It's not as good as the last one. And Demando takes it with ease. He steps one and plays, makes the tackle. There you go. The commentator's curse working in weird ways tonight. Uh, we can basically control the game by just saying what we want to happen, what, what we don't want to happen, and then the opposite will happen. So that's uh, that's always a. Uh, Beautiful thing to have out the tool belt. Maybe we don't want a good game. Maybe that will improve this match up. What do you think, Carl? Yeah, I don't think we want a tight end, to be honest. I think that uh, we want this to just be the scoreline for the rest of the game and uh, lots of errors involved. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, that that's exactly how I'd describe it. As there was a pretty bad penalty there, just holding in, as uh, the Eels were marched down the field, uh, looking to put some more points on the board. Yeah, well, uh, they'll certainly uh, definitely uh, threaten the Broncos. Their defenses look pretty flimsy tonight. Thirty points in sixty minutes. Certainly, um, not amazing defense from the Broncos. As Verretto will take down Anthony McDonald um, just before the twenty meter line, and Seamus Wilson. Boy, he's had a game. I'd love to see his stats afterwards, but uh, he has looked really good, taking some heavy carries. He scored a couple tries. And this will be the last year for the Eels. Demando will send it out to Barisic. Little juggle, and that's disappointing from the Eels. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very disappointing indeed from the Eels. I thought like, maybe you could have done some more. The likes of uh, Blake Harris and Seamus Wilson need to get more involved. The rookies really shown that they've been some of the best players in the park. Uh, and obviously with the player that's gone off at the halftime, Luke Short, I'm sure he'll be back on the field soon. Uh, the, uh, apart from that, and maybe Charlie Butler, the Eels haven't looked like too much and I think the Broncos are the exact same yeah we've said it more than a few times so this game has just been really disappointing I think Bo Sadler tries to replicate what Mark Iron did it's a bit straighter though doesn't have the angle Blake Harris will clean that up but um yeah, yeah I just <laughs> I think it's just a bit um a bit disappointing from both sides it's they, they can definitely play better than this yeah, 40-20 attempt. You don't usually kick it down the guts uh, and hope that miraculously the wind will carry it to the sideline. But, you you know, the Broncos players don't necessarily know that. Uh, just like they don't know how to win a game, uh, they're a bit challenged with some basic rules of the game, realizing that you don't have to actually get the ball past the 20. It has to go over the sideline at the same time as Cherry Evans that's an awkward kick there coming off the side of his boots. Looking pretty good, and that's a better kick than uh, Bo Sadler's. Yeah, well, I think Bo Sadler needs to take some pointers from uh, from Mark Iron and um, who just kicked that? Cherry Evans. Cherry <laughs> Evans, there we go. It happened literally two seconds ago. I forgot about it. Um, but, yeah, Bo Sadler needs to have a little conversation with those two because uh, his was pretty bad. <laughs> Yeah, did it happen two seconds? I forgot about it. It pretty much summarizes this game. It's pretty uh, non-rememberable. Like, there's nothing too much going on. There's nothing's too fancy about it. They're just kind of playing footy, and I wouldn't classify it as good either. Yeah, no, it's, it definitely hasn't been good footy. And uh, Herbin puts the kick down. It'll go down to Michael Crimp. He's been quiet tonight. Oh, He oh. makes a little break. But the Broncos know him too well. They shut him down. And we say all these nasty things about the, both the Broncos and the Eels. But in all seriousness, there have been some amazing performances tonight. Uh, it, it, in a failing team, it's been Blake Harris and Seamus Wilson and the captain Luke Short holding up their team, the two rookies and the veteran, uh, leading the team to, uh, uh, at the moment, a 12-point lead with just... Likewise for the Broncos, I think it has indeed been just in plays. Uh, Curtin Diab and Creed Alex Chapman leading um, their team to try and get back in this game. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you. I agree with all six of those names. They've looked pretty damn good tonight, but uh, their teammates just not not working to the same standard as Blake oh! Harris. Blake Harris is over. I think that's a try. Oh, it's the night of doubles in the SRL. First Luke Short, then Wilson, Seamus Wilson, and now Blake Harris. Parramatta are wrapping them up in pairs. And I think that, as soon as we get the green light on this one, will be the final nail in the coffin for the Brisbane Broncos. They're not looking too, too much of anything at the moment, really, as a great try from Blake Harris. He has been phenomenal tonight. Like I was saying earlier, he's been criticised uh, excessively in the media, in the you know, in the uh, official simulation rugby league Discord. He has been pretty 
He's been getting a pretty rough time, and I think really he's been the best player for the Parramatta Eels over the past four weeks. And uh, he's really shown that although he's never played in the fullback position in the SRL nor in the mines, he's got a great nick for it, and he's just a great all-round footballer that can fit in there really easily, and that comes with his double and many more involvements throughout the match. Yeah, well, I think there are a few questions over the Blake Harris move to fullback at the start of this game. I think I think it's all been shut down. I think Blake Harris needs to stay at fullback. He's looked so good tonight. I think he's been their best player. Um, some VP points have gone behind doors, but I think if we were able to look back at this game, I think he'll get three points, to be honest. Yeah, I'd have to agree. It'd either be him or the likes of Luke Short, I think, from the Parramatta Eels. Um, it, it'd be a close one. I uh, don't think it'd be any Broncos players getting any points this week. I'd be surprised if they did. Maybe Mark Iron for his pretty good kicking game tonight. But apart from that, it, I think it'd be all Eels on the board. Yeah, well, I think if you look at it, like this game isn't ridiculously um, like a smashing. It's been relatively close for most of the game. But no Broncos have really looked that great. Um, there's been a few that have looked decent. You mentioned them earlier, plays, uh, Diab, Alex Chapman. But none of them have really done too much. And um, I can think of a few players that have played bad, though. Yeah, it's been a bit of a sad night for Simulation Rugby League. Um, you know, when we took this game as commentators, we are hoping for something a bit more. Uh when we invited these teams back for the season, I'm sure the commissioner was thinking, well, nothing because he didn't really have a choice in the matter. But despite that, I think that it's been really disappointing from both teams. And I think the Broncos especially will be disappointed with their performance. I don't think the Eels will be too happy, although they will walk away with almost certainly a win. I don't think they'll be too ecstatic with this performance either. Uh, it, it's just been it's just been a bit of a shocker tonight. Yeah, well, we enter the final ten minutes. I'm not sure if it was against the Eels last season, but the Broncos made a comeback in the final ten minutes that was 18 points. I don't think they can do it tonight, and that um that proves why they're going to get the wooden spoon. Um, I just don't see it happening. I guess they'll have the chance to beat the Panthers uh, in round seven, but uh, to go from finals appearance in season three. So wooden spooner in season four, it's not it's not a great look. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Yeah. I'm sure the rest of the games of this round will be uh great. We've got some great matchups. Uh, I guess the round of the game of the round, I, I my pick would be the Raiders and Warriors clash. I think they'll be a really, really close game. Um, and something really worthwhile watching. Uh, likewise, with the grand final rematch, the Rabbitohs taking on the Manly Seagulls. We we've got some great games coming up this round. It's just so happened that the Wooden Spooners have uh, been elected to play each other in round five. Yeah, to open the round up. Our next game, like you said, Seagulls Rabbitohs. That'll be a that'll be a cracker, I think. Um, a bit biased as the Rabbitohs. Half back, but uh, I think Rabbitohs can give them a real run for their money. Honestly, Manly will probably win, but um, it'll be interesting to watch. I think I think we can give them a good crack. Yeah, personally, as the uh, Seagulls half back, uh, I'm pretty confident that we'll win. Um, you know, there has been some great moves from the Rabbitohs um, and to the Rabbitohs, um, but I'm pretty confident with our form over the past weeks. I think it'll be a tough game, though. I do think it'll be a tough game. Yeah, and that oh. final... What happened there? Yikes. That's, um... Well, we could get a Simbin. I don't think so. There's still six minutes left. But uh, another penalty given away there by the uh, Broncos. Yeah, the referee, Ashley Klein, not looking too happy there. Having a chat to the skipper, Justin, plays. He looked a little bit cranky with how slow the Broncos have been in the rock and... Likewise, I think the assistant referee gave a similar warning to the current vi the current acting captain, which I'm not too sure who it is. I believe it'd be Char Charlie Butler for the Eels. Is that, I don't think I've seen Luke Short come back on this half. 
Yeah, well, that's that's interesting. Maybe he's injured, but he hasn't been on at all in the in the second half. It's a little bit interesting that they wouldn't bring, or well, that the skipper wouldn't bring himself back on. He had an amazing first half, and um, I haven't seen him out there at all. Never mind, as the Eels get very, very close to the try line, and they put up a big kick here. Oh, Blake Harris, he's going to push his way over the line, and I think oh. he's got a hat trick. Blake Harris, he's absolutely topped off his performance. Let's see if it got to the ground. Klein doesn't think so. But looking at the replay, I think that's pretty clearly down. I'd like to mention a big congratulations to Blake Harris. I've spoken about it endlessly tonight. But he is proving the haters wrong. Scoring a hat-trick in his first time ever playing in the fullback position. I think he well and truly has found his feet and maybe the starting position for the rest of the season. A great effort from you tonight, and I've been very happy to watch you perform. Yeah, well, just to wrap this like game up a bit more, I think the fact that the Broncos have conceded 42 points to Parramatta, don't get me wrong, Parramatta had some good players. They weren't good tonight. They played some, They some of their players had amazing games, but as a whole... Parramatta were not good tonight, and the Broncos have just conceded 42 points to them. What happens that, if this was, like, manly? Well, that's the thing. I thought going into this game, and the Broncos looking very dangerous in their trial match against Manly in the preseason. They, they were really, really good in defense. It was quite a close game. I just don't know what's happened to the Broncos' defense here. They've broken down, I think... It's been a mental factor as well. Coming in off four straight losses, I think that the difference in mentality, the Eels really, really pushing for the win. They wanted it more, obviously, than the Broncos did, and I think that has uh, manifested into the scoreline. Um, well, I, th I think I find, it, I find it a bit funny that you're mentioning the Broncos' defense against Manly. Um, I, think, I think you're not remembering that game very well, Kay. Uh, sorry, the met. Sorry, the defense for the first half was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It definitely wasn't good all the way through. Fifty-eight to twelve, the Broncos lost that game by. Um, I guess that answers what it would have been if Manly was playing this game. Um, but yeah, the, the Broncos—they've had an appalling season. They need a rebuild, uh, pretty bad. I think. I think we'll be seeing a few players out the door. I've heard Verretto isn't happy there. Um, I've heard there's some problems with uh, Coda Diab. Um, although he's played pretty well tonight, and um... oh, as he smashed, jeez, we talked about the commentator curse, mate. Don't go and get players hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it's a deadly weapon, the commentator's curse. A deadly weapon. <laughs> so carry on. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think we will see the Broncos have a big clean out in uh, the the off season. There's a pretty shocking kick there from Herbert. He needs to go back to fullback in my uh, opinion. And that'll be the game. The Broncos oh. lose it 18 points to 42 against Parramatta. Oh, boy. That was um, that was painful to watch. Yes, I'll be calling up my roommate now and telling him to run me a hot bath. I need something after that performance. And that is a whopping 18 errors overall for the game. That is a huge amount 12, <laughs> 12 for the Broncos by oh, themselves. Wow. Uh, yeah. I think six penalties conceded is massive as well. Having six penalties conceded for the match, that's, that's not enough. That's, like, that's not good enough. It's really not, and it's been disappointing for the Broncos tonight. Blake Harris putting in a great effort with 231 run meters. We said that he was excellent tonight, but that just proves how great he has been. Uh, just, yes. <laughs> I want to draw attention to, to Seamus Wilson as well. Seamus Wilson, 28 runs, 200 meters almost. That's an incredible effort. Two tries on debut. He had a really good game, Seamus Wilson. Yeah, it was excellent stuff there from the great uh, second row of pickup. Uh, just... That's all I have to say, really. He's done really well, and so has uh, Matthew Vaughan. Uh, sorry, Blake Harris. I'm getting my Matthews and my Harrises mixed up. Is Blake Harris, not Matthew Vaughan. Uh, he did a great job 
in the number one jersey tonight, and I think that is what the Eel got the Eels uh, that win. Yeah, and if you look at the other side, the Broncos, they um, their players were pretty underwhelming. Pete Barreto making the most meters at 150. Uh, Justin Plays had a decent game. Diab had a decent game, but um, overall, they weren't really that great. Um, I think the Broncos have a lot to do. Yeah, I think the Broncos will do some soul searching, but that's all I've got to say. <laughs> Yeah, that's all I've got to say. Uh, thanks for joining us here on SRL TV. We'll see you. Uh, stick around, actually. We'll see you very shortly for the Rabbitohs versus Manly. Good night.